guys, Bondo here. It is February 25th, and I'm just unloading Kevin the Kubota over at a job that we're gonna be doing. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is a uh, whole barn. We're at a facility that makes uh, nutrition bars. And they put a pole barn up. And we were hired to pour the concrete in here. And we got some grade work to do. This is a Sunday. I'm just dropping the equipment off. Dropping Kevin off. Because we got some grading to do. They brought some material in here. Per my request. We got to dig all this um, clay organic stuff out of here. And put some, some of this crusher run in here. That's good stuff right there couple loads of that that's pretty good stuff it's got some fine in it got some stuff back here we got to clean out all this clay and stuff so that's what I'm gonna do looks like they got a heater in here that they're gonna blast try to thaw this thing out because it is pretty cold out so I told them they might have to put some heat in here I don't think it's frozen super deep but I guess this is the, this must be the heater here. The thing ain't putting on any heat. Huh. I think that's supposed to be putting out heat, but it ain't. Blowing cold air. Anyways, there's a bunch of cleanup to do in here, as you can see. All this organic stuff here over in this corner. We gotta dig all this out. Looks like it froze. Get some good stuff in here, all that's gotta go. So that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna get started over here. Just wanted to show you the job. I will be back here tomorrow and uh, I'll try to get some video footage of us prepping this. This whole thing's gonna have radiant heat in it too. I talked the guy into that. Um, it's gonna be a mechanic shop, so I told him he's gonna love the radiant heat. So we are gonna put radiant heat in here. So we will have to either conveyor this or pump it or wheel some of it. Stay tuned. Okay guys, Monday morning. I'm back over here at the big pole barn job. I got started up Kevin. Um, a couple guys are coming. Chris and Mike are coming to help me today. Um, I'm gonna dig all this clay dirt out of here. Stuff's, this is from when they dig the poles. Basically they had it ready and then they dug the poles. And I'm gonna get that out of here right now. That's what we're doing here, guys. We're dumping into the wheelbarrow and then dumping it along the edge because you can't get in here. I'm just gonna push this pile over. You have to fill in the outside so that the concrete doesn't run out. So the skirt board's higher than, the, than where the concrete's gonna be. Here's where we're at. We are putting uh, six mil poly down. Mike's finishing up camping. Uh, we put our poly down and then we'll put our foam board on top of that. So that's what we're doing right now. Got it pretty, looking pretty good in here. This is where we're at guys. We're done for the day. Is that nine counting the stuff around the perimeter or no? Yes. Okay, we got most of our foam up down, but we ran short. So. We need nine sheets, and it's gonna. We're gonna put some foam around the perimeter too. And we're gonna staple the tubing down tomorrow. I'll show you how that works. Okay, guys, we're back at the whole barn project. We got the gopher today. We're gonna put this uh, foam down, the rest of the foam, and we are going to put tubing down today this is where we were at last night You'll probably already see but we just got to finish this area up a couple sheets over here a couple pieces over here then we are gonna start laying tubing I got this stapler I'm gonna show you what stapler I got and what um, what brand it is and how it works we're gonna staple that tubing down and the manifold's gonna be over in this corner so we're gonna make up a Quick little uh, thing to do. a manifold for the pipes to come out of the floor header, I should say. 
We'll get all this done today and I'll try to get some video footage for you. And uh, that's it. Stay tuned. We got the gopher back. You gotta kinda angle them a little bit. Yeah, like out so you can. Um, the other way. See how that one is? Angle them slightly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then put the one between it. Just don't tighten it super tight. Yep, right there. Now put your other, put your piece in. Put your, put your uh, thing in there, and that'll show you where the next screw goes. So these things, guys, are Nudura T straps, and after we're done using them, we cut them with a zip wheel, and this is what we do with them a lot of times. It's a big biscuit idea, and uh, they hold that tubing really nice. Or the um, the conduit for the tubing. And that's how we uh, make our kind of like our header that comes out of the floor. We we'll just use them. And then when you get to the end, you just add another one, like put it right on the end like that and stick a screw through it. We got 12 of these coming up out. Um, it's going to be six loops in this barn. So we got 12 conduits, one for supply and one for return on each one. Try to keep the tops of these like flush, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then if you tighten them, it'll hold it. All right, we're, we're doing pretty good here. Chris and Mike are over here working down the wall, getting all that foam in. Gopher's doing what you just seen him doing. We got this all done. We're just finishing up the door. What we're gonna do today is we gotta snap a bunch of lines on the floor for our uh, one foot pattern here. We are gonna run this tubing on one foot grid. So we got four foot pattern with the foam, so we might be able to kind of use that too along the edge of the foam, probably what we'll do. I got thousand foot rolls of tubing. We're gonna be running uh, 500 foot loops in this barn which we've done that a bunch of times. Some people say you can only run 300 foot, but we've done, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 barns at 500 feet and it works really good. You just need a, a little bit stronger pump. So we use a Taco 009 pump or a three speed Taco pump and that works great for 500 foot loops. And then you don't have so many pipes sticking out of the floor. This simplifies it, especially on these big barns. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start in this corner. We're going to run it this way, back and forth. This barn's square, so it's not going to matter the way we run it. We usually run it the longer way. If it's a rectangle building, we try to run the tubing the longer run, so you got less turns. Because every time you turn and come back, it's uh, you know it takes you more time. So we are going to insulate the perimeter of this. I've ripped down a bunch of uh, pieces of foam that are six inches. And we're going to put that along the edge, all these rips here. We're just going to nail it up. And our concrete will be even with that. And that'll be inside the wall. So when they close their wall off, you're not even going to see it. We are, I think we're going to put something along that back wall too. Probably something a little thinner. One inch maybe. These are the staples. We're using uh, the two inch, two and a half inch staples. So by the time you uh, get the tubing in there, they're gonna be two inches, so that's what we did. I bought a whole bunch of staples. I don't wanna run out of staples to get concrete coming tomorrow. But this is the one that you can staple into wood too, because it's got a weight in it. So you can actually staple to a wood floor with this one. 
There's your different size staples, two and a half or an inch and a half, depending on what foam you use. Looks like it's a PWS1. I got that on at Supply House online. All this stuff's from Supply House. I get my tubing from Supply House. I buy it in thousand foot rollers. Oxygen barrier tubing. All right, guys, we're coming down the home stretch here, finally. This staple thing is pretty slick. It does jam up every once in a while, but some of it's user error. Oh, just like that. I just said it was going to jam up, and what does it do? <laughs> Jams up. <laughs> I'm going to put some more staples in it. Okay guys, so this stapler, it's got a weight on it. The weight has a slit in it that goes this way. So it slides past that right there. So the points have to go down. So this stuff is kind of accordions like that. So you want to go this way. And then it won't go past there anyways. If you put them backwards, it'll hit here. But put like, uh, I like to put about three in there. Then the weight, and this is actually a kickstander, so you can kind of stick it like that, it's pretty slick. But what I've learned is don't lay it on its side because it'll get whacked up and it'll jam. And uh, make sure these are kind of rolling like that, because if they get a little cattywampus, it'll jam up. But if it jams up, all you gotta do is pull this panel back really hard and reach up in there and pull the staple out. It's not too bad, but she works really good. Back at it. Full of steam. Burn, burn. Burn, and burn, baby. This is how we do it. We just roll the tubing out. We don't have an uncoiler or none of that crap. We just roll her out. That's how we've done it for a long time. Pull it back a little bit. This thing is slick. I like it. I've been stapling this stuff about every four feet, guys. And it seems to be holding rather nicely. So it's good with the styrofoam board. Obviously, they're four by eight sheets. So we can just put one on the end of the sheet, basically. And one in the middle. Roughly in the middle. We're not measuring them. You've seen that we, uh, Chris and Mike went ahead and snapped a bunch of lines in front of us. Chris actually had to take off. It's his son's birthday. He's out of here. They got the wire all the way up to there. Me and Dustin just finishing up. Putting these last, this last loop in. Last run. 500 foot loops are coming out really good. Pull it to you. Yep, there. Staples. Seems to be these two and a half inch staples are holding very 
very well so far. We'll see how it goes when we get concrete on there. Turn them over. Running down our last loop of 500 here. Probably seen us tie the tubing to the wire mesh. Well, we like this better so far because now our wire mesh is up in the air a little bit. The wire mesh police will be happy. Mm -hmm. right, Dustin, the wire mesh police will be happy with. Yeah, it'll be off our ass. They won't even know, know what to say. I don't even know what to say about the video. We'll have to say good job. Yeah. Hey, you guys did nice work. <laughs> Wire mesh was right up where you needed it. Easy bucks. Easy bucks. Very true. One thing this does is saves your back. And you can tell. Yeah, that bending over crap. Tying the tubing is not fun. We did it like that for a long time. We usually get a lot of people when we do it that way. But it's still hard on the butt on the back. For sure. all done about one o'clock so we started at eight about five hours to do all this finish up the foam staple all the tubing down put the wire on i really like how this wire lays on there it gives it a nice good probably an inch in a lot of spots up which that's going to be right where we want that wire that concrete's going to flow right around it because the tubing's holding it up so i do like that it is um, I'll show you some of the details we did um, there's some racking pallet racking going in here so that's why we left these areas out of tubing we left them a two-foot swath because they're gonna fasten their pallet racks down to the floor so we basically squiggled up through here and then we uh, left that line out right there we did it in four spots right here we did it here right here through and one more right here and they gave us that those measurements where they wanted that so that's why we did that they gave us a little blueprint here so this is their pallet racking we're gonna have a four foot space and 12 foot so right where these legs go we did not put any tubing there we kind of kept off the wall pretty good too but that's why you see those squiggly lines. We put 3,000 feet of tubing in here. We probably had 10, 15 feet left over. So we did good on the layout. All the loops are within 15 feet of each other, 15, 20 feet of each other. So that's how we did it. 500 foot loops, which we've done a bunch of times and it works really good. Smaller ones we do 300, but on these bigger ones we can run up to 500 with no problems whatsoever. You, this thing will heat like a dream. So we're going to be back here tomorrow to pour some concrete. I'll try to get some, obviously get some video footage of that. It's supposed to rain, but we're going to be inside. This door does. There's a door on here we can close, so we might have to just cover this ledge here with some plastic or whatever. Make a little tent, and we'll be golden. See you tomorrow. Morning guys, it is February 28th and we are gonna pour some concrete. I got the truck and 
the trailer all loaded up i got three machines a day we're pouring a 58 by 58 you probably see in the video with the radiant heat in it um i'm heading that way now concrete's coming at eight o'clock stay tuned check out that cool rainbow guys heading to the job here i think that is cool i think it's gonna be a good day that's a good sign right there we're coming up to the job guys it's this big facility right here on the right this is uh in cato new york that's where this job is it's called nutrition bar confections right there's the company we're working at today it's this pole barn right here that you've probably already seen beginning of the video we got to get our tools unloaded at 7 30 mud's coming in a half an hour looks like biscuits over there in his truck oh there's the cleveland's beautiful we're gonna unload this and get ripping <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get it right on video biscuit filled up the power trial with diesel fuel this morning blue can even so we are gonna try to, try to get the diesel out of it. Yeah, that'll probably not run but super good. She might chug. Yeah, she'll chug. I didn't get a lot of diesel in it. That was mostly gas. I know, I stopped you quick. I was like, no! Blue can, diesel. We do use the blue for red sometimes. But not this morning we didn't. I had diesel for the for the heater. That was the only can on the trailer. I had uh, diesel for the heater in case we needed it. See that, Chris? Biscuit fills up the trail with diesel. That's the start of our morning. Look at that look. You gotta laugh. Here comes the mud, guys. Our first conveyor truck. Looks like, I'm not sure who's driving today. It ain't Sean. Looks like Travis. Travis. On time, baby. Right on time today. Eight o'clock. On the dot today with the mud. Starting off with this conveyor. We got Circle T bought a new conveyor, so this one uh, is a, reaches a little bit farther. So this one should reach the back of this building, and then we're gonna the second truck's coming in. A different conveyor that's probably six feet shorter so we're gonna run that second truck each truck's got 10 yards and then uh, I think we're gonna puff up the next few front loaders and dump onto the conveyor but we're gonna start way in the back that's the plan today stretching out the conveyor that's a remote controlled unit so basically he's got to stretch it out and then have it out at an angle so you can get in the door and back right in the door and not hit anything that's how we do it and this is just a conveyor belt right there it's just a belt that spins brings the concrete right into that boot if you haven't seen my videos we use this thing quite a bit um saves on a pump we would have to pump this if we didn't have these good conveyors from circle t there's our credentials They're out of New Haven, New York, which is about 45 minutes north of Syracuse. That's where, that's right where I live too. We work uh, all over Oswego County for the most part. We, we go outside of Oswego County a little bit, but most of it's in Oswego County. That's how he's gonna do it. And then he's gonna back right in and not hit anything. Travis will do a good job. It's pretty warm for the 28th of February, I can tell you that, guys. What's the temperature? 35? It's like 35. It's warmer than that. I was gonna say, it's like 55. It's like warm. It's almost like too warm to have a hoodie on, almost. It's like crazy. For February 28th, this is insane. Five, buddy, yeah. Five slump. Five to five and a half slump we're looking for here. 
We're gonna mix it up right now. Get it what we want. Get this mud in. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we got our first truck in. That's 10 yards. So that went pretty smooth. We're running a pretty nice, about a five slump. Nice tight slump, so we won't be here all night. night. Excuse me. We're cleaning out that truck. Let's get all that, Jay. Let's get everything there. And trucks right out, so we got all the money we need. We don't want to waste that gray gold, you know what I'm saying, bud? That stuff's like gold. What's that? Yeah, it did tighten right up. Good thing we didn't do 2% today. Alright, we're gonna get that second truck in here and get ripping. All both loaded and uh, looking good. Do that on every 
truck and you got probably a yard on six trucks so we don't want to be short if you had six of them piles that's what we'd be short a yard of concrete's two hundred dollars in this day and age or more with hot water in it it's probably 220 biscuit with the suspenders on everybody says you're your medium biscuit now medium. yeah you shrink over the winter too much of that carpentry work he's been a carpenter all winter so I can get back to my real job <laughs> this is your real job there's the new truck guys right there that used to be their volumetric truck the, the cab and chassis they put a conveyor on it it's like i said it's a touch shorter than the other conveyor i'm not sure exactly i think five six feet shorter but that's a beautiful truck right there so we're gonna get this one stretched out he's gonna back in and uh once we get that back corner done we'll be in good shape then they can just dump onto the other conveyor actually we're probably gonna finish up with this truck here but we're gonna wheel that whole back section we got to but that's all right we got our Brentwoods we got three of them today so we'll be in good shape hopefully he's got that slump already for us we still haven't lettered up the drum on this truck all right second trucks in we got them at an angle here. So, we're not going to clean these, but it's okay. We're going to get her. I'll show you what it looks like. So, he's still got to stretch out, so we're going to get him stretched out. Once we get this first two trucks unloaded, they're going to be golden. going to be golden. What's that, bud? A little bit, yeah. That tightened right up at the end. That stuff's pretty tight. That stuff. Yep, let her rip, buddy. Get her done. Get it in there. Make sure we dump on that plywood, guys, so we don't cut the tubing. That's the biggest concern. What's that? What's the fun of that? <laughs> All that work we did, <laughs> putting tubing down yesterday. Three Brentwoods, let's let her rip. Going good so far. Like I said, it'll go a lot better. We get this back corner done and we'll be in good shape. Then we should be able to just shoot everything. How's the mud look, Mike? How's it look? Pretty good. Pretty good. We don't want it too loose. We'll be here all night. Plywood strips down to dump on to. We're in good shape. Big fist. Got a good team here today, guys. Definitely not short-handing ourselves. Not with a big floor like this. Take us long, guys. You've seen us work with these barrels before. We can put some mud down in a hurry.
corner back. Well, that corner was the spot we couldn't reach. So we're dumped, this is how they dump the truck on from this one. The way, nice hoodie, bud. I love it. I know Bill hoodie right there. Yeah, and the shirt, and the shirt. That a boy. I don't have hats yet. I gotta get some hats. All right, so they dump this uh, right in the front, right onto the uh, conveyor there. That's how we do it, guys. This truck's just gonna dump on, and the rest of the trucks will dump on him, because he's empty. That was our second load that we dumped. We're gonna be short on mud, that's for sure. I called the plant and told them to puff up the last truck. We'll need a balance, but that's all right. These big barns, it's hard to get the perfect amount of concrete. It might be a little bit deep, but that's all right. Big Robbie, the legend right there. Look at that man. Getting a thick floor here. Probably set gray right there, guys. And we're gonna pull a wet pad over here. We're gonna pull a wet pad across there. Mark and Ryan. And that is the height of our floor right there. And I'll put a line in it like that. That means that's good so nobody messes with it. Then they're gonna turn and we're gonna pull the mud out this way like we've been. By pulling it this way, we're not pulling mud onto what we're pouring next. So we're gonna pull out and it'll land in our next um, area that we're gonna pour. It's going smooth. We're just gonna be short on concrete. But that's all right. Just call on a balance. Nothing to worry about. We're gonna put a wet pad in here for our next pole coming down. That's why Chris is piling up the concrete there. Mark's gonna put a mark over here. Mark's gonna put a mark. Yeah, Mark's gonna put a mark. Right here, and then we'll do the same thing. Make our wet pad, and we'll pull this one out. We're working our way right out of this thing here. Yeah, yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah, I already see him. <laughs> he said it. Oh, yeah. He was just. Yeah, big rabbit. Yeah. You need a mark there. Somebody scraping Dwight or no? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we want there. every ounce of that. Shit. Big biscuits going to scrape. Right. Biscuits getting it. We're gonna get every bit of it, guys. Get it all. Big Robbie. Truck number four. What you got here? Here it comes. Looks good. Hard to tell. Better run. Pretty good. Not bad. Oh, it's starting to rain out. Starting to rain. Got the conveyor belt, guys. We are gonna put a wet pad down through here. So we got some. Uh, gonna go on. We're dumping. This is the fifth truck. It should be. 52-ish yards. What's this, slump too tight or something, Jay? A meatball. Oh, big piece of concrete. Big thin piece of concrete. Yeah, we don't want that! <laughs> no. Clog it straight up. They pulled a big chunk of uh, concrete out of this truck from the fins. here so we're gonna shoot it right out of the truck so the last uh, the last truck and the rest of this truck which this truck's about half empty is going to be shot right out of that front loader so we're not gonna use the conveyor anymore because it's kind of getting getting congested as we get out towards the end here we're kind of uh, running out of space so we're gonna get this edge up here freshened up and uh, that's what we're doing He's gonna pull him right in. Is that? Make sure you get that pieces of chunky shit in his way. Looks like it might be. He's gonna run right into that chunky shit. Hold up! Hold up! You're gonna hit that chunky stuff. Keep coming. Once he moves that, you're good. I got your front tire. Perfect. We're in. Hey guys, we got one truck coming in with the balance. Not the balance, but the 
last truck. We had plenty of concrete. Actually, we're going to have a couple yards left over, unfortunately. But that first truck didn't go very far. Of course, the first truck had 10, and the next trucks were puffed up. So puffed up to like 11. Or the first two trucks were 10. We puffed up the rest of them. That's all right. Chris and Mike are over there finishing. We're just getting this last bit done here. Did we miss a spot, guys? <laughs> breaking it with a 36 inch machine. Mike's on the edges. We're finishing this up. Our concrete's about 20 minutes away to finish this corner. We'll pull this, get this closed in. Pretty good shape here. We got our last truck. We're gonna pull them right through this man door right here, guys. That's gonna save us from having to wheel anything. Careful, careful. We got plenty of mud. That's some tight mud right there, guys. We're bringing in the last load real tight. About a three and a half. Hold up. I'd say that's probably gonna do it. Clean that little bit off the end so it doesn't get flattered. We'll see where that goes. We'll see where that goes right there. Second grade. Oh, you ain't bad right there, Ryan. No. Not shabby at all. That's some tight stuff right there. See how high she stands? Mark is cranking it in out the door. We got a little bit left. Putting a couple shovels in. Good. Looking good, boys. We are looking good. Chris and Mike are out there on the second truck already. That is some experience right there, guys. The way we rip right there. Wipe that door and threshold off. Pretty close, right there. That boat's happy to have. I love it when we're finishing up. Very big land here. Get the white cleaned up. The rest is going to be finishing with What we're doing guys, we're on the sliders. This is out there with the machine. We're running it this way. We're going to give them a hand finish. Everybody's on the sliders. Chris and Mike are on the three foot machines. Concrete life, guys. It's raining. Um, we're in good shape, though. 
We laid most of it down by hand. We're kind of waiting on that last truck. It's the only thing we're waiting on. So we poured that at about a three slump, so that shouldn't take too long, but it is gonna cool down tonight. It's supposed to cool right down and um, get get super cold. So I'm um, glad we got it in. Just gonna wait on this rain, wait on that concrete to tighten up in that last corner and we'll be done. Bro, you ready? You ready to go? Bro, you ready to go? You excited? You wanna go with dad? You wanna go with dad? It's cold out. It's cold out, buddy. It's cold out. He's a little bit excited. Come on, buddy. We gotta get in the truck. Come on, Ro. Get in the truck, bud. Come on. Gotta get in the truck, buddy. Come on. Come on. Going to cut the floor today, guys. I'm gonna go give it a, some slices. Me and Ro. We're gonna meet Chris over there. Get in there, bub. You ready to go? You ready to go? You excited? This is concrete life in New York State, guys. Hey, Ro. Ro. Rowan. Hey. He's ignoring me. I straight ahead. A little different than yesterday. We're almost to the job. And uh, this is what we're dealing with today. We gotta go slice and dice the floor. Me and my little co-pilot here. Yeah, this is what we're dealing with. I barely made it up the hill. Didn't have my truck locked into four-wheel drive. Here's our building. What do you think, bro? Get in there and see what she looks like. Probably gonna be right in their way. They're plowing snow. They got probably five inches of snow here. We filmed what we had at the house. We didn't have much. Bro, hey, Rufflehead, what you doing? Well, I'm inside the building. Ain't much light in here. They got a heater on. Doesn't put out much heat. It was out here before. It's like lukewarm. Eh, it's got a little heat coming out the bottom of it, but I think the concrete's in good shape because it's the walls are sweating in here. So I'll show you that. You can see the walls are sweating, so concrete's gonna be good. It looks a little funny right now because of the different colors. Like once it all whitens up, it'll look different. But you can see that last truck right there. We see the moisture on the walls. That means it's getting some heat in here. So we just got to figure out, um, Chris is coming. We're going to figure out how we're going to cut this thing and uh, show you what it looks like. Hey guys, so you probably wonder why this floor doesn't look super smooth. Like we usually get the floors a lot smoother. Well, uh, this floor here in particular is going to get epoxy coated and uh, they are going to put a sand in the in the epoxy as well so it's going to be a sand coated epoxy finish so um that's why we hand troweled it and we left it a little bit uh you know it's not as smooth as it normally would be so the epoxy will stick because uh, otherwise if we burned it in really smooth then uh, the epoxy wouldn't stick and they'd probably have to grind it anyway so that's why uh the floor looks like it does and it's not um all polished up nice um, like we normally would do. Okay, we got it all cut. We swept everything up, but we need to, uh, this needs to be washed and, and uh, soaked. And it should be, we like to soak these floors for about a couple of weeks if we can. So um, I'm gonna give that direction to the building owner. And right now we don't wanna wet it because obviously it's so cold out, but tomorrow's gonna warm back up again. Then they can start um, wetting everything and keep it right soaked for about two weeks. And then they can start using the floor. They got to pull some heavy equipment in here and put some pallet racking and stuff up. But we cut it at about 11 foot six. 